The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, The Beat. Featuring the week's roundup and commentary on music news. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, The Beat. I'm just a Hey. What up, y'all? It's your boy DJ Jesse Jan here in studio for Black Hollywood Live's The Beat. I'm joined by Poppy Watts. What it do, what it do. You see it. Let's go. We in the building. Let's go. <laughs> Sir Cameron Marston. Yo, Cameron Petty. Doesn't say Cameron Marston. Kevin Parsons, Kevin Penny <laughs> underscore on Twitter. What's that? Holla. Holla. Check yeah. him out. But that's all right, y'all, because unfortunately Queen couldn't be with us, and she wanted to be because we got a swooner here with us, y'all. Uh-oh. We have Grammy nominated Uh-oh. Alonzo B. Real. Hey. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. up, boys? I'm in the building. What's What's that? That? Listen, I'm happy to be here, guys. Man. I'm just wanting to have a good time. <laughs> Thank you. Know? Thank they you. can holla at me on at Alonzo B. Real. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, sir. And, and I got to say, you're really interactive with your fans. Absolutely. Well, no, I mean, it's not, it can't be absolutely, because a lot of times people say they are, but they aren't. But I got to say, you, you be on top, you be on point, you be really connecting with your fans. I mean, I have to. I know appreciate know I mean? that. Like, <laughs> I, I like to, my last name is Burrell, and it's spelled like Be Real. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I get asked all the time every day, is, it, is that really your last name? I'm like, it's Burrell. It real? Yeah, you're, that, you're Everybody family. says Be Real, you know what I mean? But it's really Burrell, but it's spelled like, so I, I said, I have to be real at all times because right. of the way it's spelled, you know what I mean? I love it. Uh, all right, so you got a new song. We're going to play it in a little bit. Um, but before we do, we got some topics to talk about, and I'm excited because, you know, you know you know, you know, know a little bit about the Grammys. I mean, yeah. just a little bit. Just I've only you know, been on the red carpet and only been, you know, nominated. And only, for how many years now? Yeah, I mean, come on. So it's home court. We need some, <laughs> we need some a, a expert opinion on, uh, on some things that are going on. But before we do that, um, I got to talk to Spike Lee uh, last week with the Shy Rock. I think you were there too, right? Yes, sir. Um, it's been getting a lot of controversial ups, downs. People like it. People ain't really messing with it. Uh, Chance the Rapper came out to say, let me be the first from Chicago to say, we ain't messing with it. He said um, the movie came off goofy, offensive to women. Um, no disrespect to Spike Lee, he just ain't messing with the movie. And he feels like if you're going to write a movie about Chicago, be from Chicago. What are y'all thinking? Well, yeah, man. I mean, I, I was born in, and raised in Chicago, so I'm familiar. I haven't really, I haven't seen the movie. I'll just be real, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, obviously... Word of the day. Yeah, huh? Nah, <laughs> be real. Nah, but for real, if you're from anywhere, you should be drawn from inspiration of really living that or being around someone who's really from there, you know what I mean? So I kind of side with Chance. I mean, I haven't had an opportunity to see the movie, so I, I'll hold reservation. But yeah, you definitely should be... From there, or yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Was from there. I, like I said, we was at the junket and the press conference, and uh, I seen clips of the movie. And you know, Spike Lee is a very artistic director, and he was able to pull from the play. I cannot remember when all the women the had, strata, the strata, where women got to hold sex um, for their guys to start fighting each other, but. I'm from Youngstown, Ohio. It's not Chicago, but they used to call us Little Chirac, you know, for the gang violence. But when you have your lead actor, Nick Cannon, supposed to portray this gangster, that's already going to lose some street cred right there, having Nick Cannon be the gangster. And then second of all, listening to Round Fest, he was on our Sway in the Morning, and he was saying, okay, well, if you wanted to go that way in the movie, why didn't you do an all-Chicago soundtrack and get, get more influence and get more people in from the city to get behind it, the Kanye's, the, the Chief Keefs, and the Chances, and right, right. so many other people. But, um... First, watch the movie first before you make yeah. any judgment about the movie. Because so the movie is out. The movie's no. out. The movie came out on, on uh, last, no, fr- no, last December. Friday. Yeah, last Friday. Okay, yeah, December fourth, yeah, it came out. Uh, uh-huh. The movie is out. Uh, I got a chance to see it, and I got to say, I get certain things of it. But the thing is, as an artist, I feel like you should respect another one's artwork, mm-hmm. and because everything can be, you know taken out of context and whatnot and if you watch the movie the movie isn't slamming chicago it's it could have been in brooklyn it could have been in new jersey it could have been anywhere it's just right now chirac is a hot topic it's a hot name that's out there you even brought it up that that is what a a term that is used and that's just kind of the moral of the story. I mean, have you you kind of heard a little bit about it i've I've heard a little bit about it i want to go see it you know um I support Spike Lee. 
he's a legend, first of all. Yep. Who is Chance? You know what I mean? Um, when I think about Chicago, I don't think about Chance. I think about Common. I think about Kanye. I think about R. Kelly. I think about the legends of Chicago. Uh, even I think about Twister. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm pretty sure, you know, Spike Lee put his best foot forward. And you have to understand, too, the politics of the movie game. You know what I mean? It, everything isn't on him. Every decision isn't his. And so um, I haven't seen it yet. But I believe that uh, there are a lot of movies that have been done about certain cities where the directors and producers ain't from there. Right. I'm and sure, so, sure. you know, um, I just think that it, there's a way to be more positive about this black man that, mm. you know what I mean, that went out to put his work forward, put his foot forward. And trying to bring awareness. And trying to situation. bring awa awareness to something. I think we're paying attention to the wrong thing, Chance. I totally agree. I, mean, I agree, man. Yeah, and right, man. and you, you make a good it. point. Uh, <laughs> you make a good par point saying that like we should definitely support black directors because Spike Lee is a legend, man. I mean, his resume goes on and on, so I would never want to slam him. Yeah. Um, you know, but you think of, like about like ATL with, like, with Tip. It's like T.I. embodies Chicago. I would have liked to have seen at least like you said, one of the yeah. legends from Chicago, if not act as somebody in it, definitely have a hand in it. It would have right. made it a little bit more authentic. But I get what you, I definitely want to support Spike Lee and what he's doing because he is a phenomenal director. So yeah, I mean, yeah. he's a good guy, too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, very good. And I mean, definitely a moral within the story. It's not here to rip any, tear any society down. But right. shout out to Chance, though. He is going to actually be the first indie rapper on SNL uh, this Saturday performing. So congratulations on that. Yeah, congrats. Uh, also, congrats to The Wiz, 11 million viewers. Yes, yes. yes. It was 11. Seven? Yeah, viewers. that's crazy. What, what did y'all think? That's I mean, crazy. I just thought it was incredible. I thought it was great. It was great. It was incredible. Everybody bought their A game. Everybody's talent was beyond what I was thinking. I wish I was there though. I, th I think you would have got a little bit more from the play. That's my question there. though. I don't think they film in front of an audience. They because did. I would have really have liked to hear the audience reacting mm -hmm. to what I was watching. I think it's a closed set that they filmed it online. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out. Right? But yeah, I please wanna, do. I thought, I thought they, would, they had an audience, but I thought it was um, dope. I would They were too quiet for me. I would have been in the audience. Like, I'm using that right yeah. too. But you know what? I, I, I just feel like, and nothing against Shonis, but Ooh. I, I would have picked a different Dorothy. Wow. Okay, well, since you brought it up, I'm going to second that Keep it one. real. Because, uh, okay. I mean, I got to be was, real, right? She was, I, she was great. Loved the girl, the girl saying home. Because for real... When it finally came to home, I was like, this is why they picked her. But it took up until that I moment. The whole time at the I end. said, Be real over here for Dorothy? sure. Like, I don't know what is going on. And then the storyline was just a little weird at the beginning if you knew the original. But, you know, you were able to embrace that. I really love what David and Alan Greer did with the Cowley. Yes, Man. I thought he was one he, of the better. Oh, my God. He was one of the better. Yep. You know, he, he, he brought up the, the level for me. You know what I mean? And then I like what uh, Elijah Blake and uh and neo that was dope you know what i mean mm -hmm. and uh i just feel like man uh i, I don't know if i would have picked Mary. wait a minute hold up that was elijah blake that wasn't elijah blake yeah no oh elijah kelly okay because i was like wait a minute elijah <laughs> kelly <laughs> yeah um and neo they killed it but i, I don't know if i would have picked um i think i might have went with jennifer hudson instead of mary J. okay thank you okay i agree that the the wicked witch could have been either Jennifer Hudson or even Queen Latifah, I feel like, could have pulled yeah, the off that. Fantasia. But, ooh. Man, man, like, Mary did a good I don't job, think though. Queen should have been the, the Wiz. Uh, Wiz. Yeah, I mean, I get why they did it. I get why they did it, too. But let me ask you this. I love Queen. Bruno Mars as the Scarecrow. That would have been How perfect. epic would that have been? That would have been epic. I just keep saying it. Everyone's Chris probably Brown could have been good, too, as the Scarecrow. Yeah, Chris Brown. Definitely. You know? But that, back to the Shanice thing, that was the pick for me. I was like... Yeah, that was the only thing that really, really yeah, yeah, bothered me. Star, because I mean. I'm like, no. Like, Dorothy is not... Dor I Dorothy, for one, is supposed to be like this... this Careful <laughs> words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dorothy is supposed to be something that everybody is like, oh, my God. Yeah, there's a desire in there. Is there some kind of desire, you know what I mean? And And... Dorothy is the like she she's the one that everybody loves and I didn't see that in this 
You didn't get that. Like, that. I didn't get that. I mean, we respect is- Shanice and what she's done and the voice and things like that. But I feel like for 2015, Wiz, we could have. That wasn't supposed to happen. Mm. How many? How old Amber, was I wonder. How Amber Riley. I was. I, I'm not gonna lie. I, there were times where I was watching and I was like, I wonder how Amber Riley feels about this. Like as she sings, the Wiz. She just want to beat that. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you like, this. Let me take y'all online. I'm gonna tell y'all like, this. <laughs> I might have picked like a Ariana Grande. Mm. Interesting. For Dorothy. Really? For the Wiz though to fall under Diana Ross, that's mm. kind of. Mm. I mean, what you're saying? Maybe not. Her might, well, she's in, she's, a, she's, a, yeah, she's in the middle. She's in. She's in. Yeah. She's in the middle. But I'll, she can either be a that or, or like yeah, Munchkin. I would have put her in there. I would have put like. I would have put Seven Streeter, Mila J, like the the young black. Put like a. a you know I mean, girl. like yeah. the. There, there's new faces. Yeah, definitely. Or at least an upcomer from Broadway, someone who already kind yeah. of has. Like a, or what, what? What happened with Brandy? She could have been Dorothy. Oh, she already over Chinese. She did Cinderella years ago. We ain't. But we ain't remembering that. We're in 2015. Who remembers Cinderella? Uh, me. I was just singing Impossible. The other <laughs> Y'all remember that? <laughs> I, I remember sure Whitney was in it, but that's all you, I remember. What? You don't remember Brandy I never even and her it. Asian prince who had a black mother? No, nope. never seen it. But I remember her. <laughs> Whitney, her and Whitney did it. That was the most diverse yeah, Whitney, cast. Yeah, that was a diverse cast. Absolutely. 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 Let's get those back. All right, moving from that. Congratulations to everyone. A Absolutely. Part of the Wiz. That was Congrats. awesome. Uh, also, congratulations to those who were nominated for Grammys this year. Unfortunately, Lupe Fiasco decided to post some salt on his Instagram because he's salty from not being nominated. Um, as well as Omarion. Omarion kind of went on a little rant how he felt post to be was supposed to be on the nominations. That's my brother, and I don't feel like that was supposed to be. Yeah, I would say I don't agree with that. I mean, it was a good record, and it did some radio It was good for him, and I was was happy he had that record. It's trendy. Yeah, no, and and it's good to see him back. Yes. Yes. You know, maybe the BET Awards or something like that. For sure, no, there's a nomination for post to be. Yeah, Yeah, not with the Grammy Grammy. Because mm-hmm. yeah. people are bringing up uh, some people. They said people that were snubbed. Uh, our, they said brought up uh, Selena Gomez. They brought up Rihanna. Bitch, better have my money. Some some songs are American Music Awards. Yeah, some some are Billboard's, right, right, and then right. you have the Grammys. Right. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Grammys is the top dog of them all. Now the Grammys gets it wrong sometimes. They yeah, do. They, they, do. They, they do. They do. Because I mean, this year we got uh, some some big snubs that people are talking about is Madonna and Prince. Uh, Madonna. I don't know. For me, I could not really a Madonna fan, but I can give the respect of at the age that she is. This Rebel Heart tour and that CD that she put out did really well for her age, for her category. And people just the fact that people mess with Madonna at this level is crazy. Now let me ask you this though: Have you heard a song from Madonna or Prince in the last year um, that should have been Grammy nominated? I haven't. Yeah, in like the they past. can't just get there because of their name. And, and I'm gonna tell you this: ten years. My one of my Grammy nominations, we lost to Prince, and you know he's a legend. All respect. But, but it was a song. Ain't no one heard of. That wasn't number one for 15 weeks like us. Straight up. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? Well, but, let me let me ask you this real quick. What's the feeling of being nominated and the feeling of being snubbed? I mean, the emotion that an artist would go through. The feeling of being nominated, I mean, you know that. Yeah. Everybody can imagine the feeling of being nominated, the excitement. Mm-hmm. The, you get to do the red carpet at the Grammys, and, you know, and it's amazing to see your name in the book. And, you get the and, invitation. Yeah, you like, get the invitation. Like, but when you're snubbed, like... It's just like, really? I've been snubbed a few times. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that you work with Tyrese. Yeah, Tyrese, yeah. So, you know, you figured the Black Rose, the Shame record, you would figure that I didn't even nominate that. That's album. what I'm saying. I can't believe it. And I did a song on that album, and it wasn't nominated. But it was an amazing R&B album. It I don't know why it didn't get nominated for R&B. Well, uh, one thing I read about the Grammys, <clears throat> they said this year specifically in hip-hop and R&B, they're tightening up and so I learned about I I tried to read up on some of the rules of the Grammy it's like the people who created the the Grammy rules did it for a very specific reason you can't get no more R&B than the Black Rose album no no I understand that you can't the Grammys don't so what they said is this year specifically is they really are trying to uh, they really try to put a focus on what the categories are to really respect uh, people from different categories that they technically wouldn't before. They said that they, they're trying to tighten it down a little bit and they're also trying to open up more because uh, you can only 
vote for 30 something and there's 80 something categories mm -hmm. so they're trying to open that up a little more well let me i don't well, know if that makes a difference or not or what are you thinking i don't i mean i just feel like they trying to box us out man mm -hmm. you know uh even a lot of the hip-hop and r&b nominations are shown in the pre-taping mm -hmm. you know yeah. what i mean uh, <clears throat> i just pay attention to stuff but what did lupe did he say what did he say something so he was salty he just posted he was, a picture of a, a salt picture shaker. of salt. I mean, I, he I, he kind of does this almost every year. I want to say. I mean, I've never, you know, all respect to every artist, but I've never thought <coughs> of Lupe as somebody to be a part of the Grammys. Well, he won a Grammy as of recently. No, a couple years ago. I, yeah, for recently, right? Because Lupe used to be hella dope. To yeah, me yeah, he won but one a couple years ago. But the stuff is, is that I mean, he puts out dope stuff continuously, but it doesn't get played. It doesn't get put right. in the right markets. Well, right, right. And we're gonna get into a little more because Bob is kind of speaking. Well, out Lupe about got this blackballed now. when he started talking about the president exactly. and going in on right. ISIS a couple years ago. So. so that might have hurt him as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just I feel like kind of like what you're saying. I feel like a lot of artists are gonna get snubbed, man. If you're just honoring people just because of who they are, bro, yeah, like man. what difference does it make? You know, I mean, it's supposed to be about the music. At the end of the well, day, at the end of the day, what kind yeah. of impact did the music have? Doing the AMAs, because you're right. No, I'm with you on that. You know what What's the music do? <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, but during the AMAs, Tank sent out the tweet. He was like, "Yo, how can I mean? I love the weekend. He's one of the dopest artists. But you, that R and B black tie is just like." That's R and B. That's the Temptations. That's Luther. That's the original. Yeah, stuff. but I mean, at the end of the day, but the this is the new R and B. Weekend is new. I have to. I have to come to the weekend's rescue because I love what he's doing. Yeah. And one thing we have, one thing we have a hard time with, is accepting change. And I love Tyrese. That's my brother. If I call him right now, he gonna answer. But when I'm in the club or when I'm chilling with some chicks, I'd rather play the weekend. Because, you know, Tyrese and the, and the Eric Benet's and the Tanks, and we love them. But that's more like urban AC, like adult mm -hmm. contemporary mu music mm -hmm. that most of the time it creates an older environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like to play the weekend, Chris Brown. You know what I mean? The the What's happening next you know what i mean even trey songs some of the trey songs records but even trey songs falls into that tyrese and tank yeah. sometime you know what i mean mm -hmm. depending on what he's doing but i just think that the weekend he, he took r&b to another level this year man and and you know tyrese is more of a soul singer there's a difference between soul and r&b yep mm. you know what i mean uh, but well let's talk about uh, some of the nominations the people who did get nominated uh, album of the year Taylor Swift, 1989, Kendrick Lamar, How to Pimp a Butterfly, Chris Stapleton, The Traveler, Weekend, Beauty Behind the, what is it, the music? And the music behind the, Beauty Behind the Madness, excuse me, and Alabama Shakes, Sound and Color. A weekend, Kendrick, Taylor, I'm thinking. I mean, Alabama Shakes is pretty popular, mm -hmm. but I kind of think it's going to go to a pop urban. Category. Now, what what category is this again? Album of the year. I, I that's I, a tough because I just uh, Taylor Swift. Taylor, is just yeah, like, you, I think yeah. it's going to be. Yeah, it's for sure going to be. I, mean, I, I think I'm going to go with Taylor. I think this was her bro, blank. Sure. That blank space song. Yeah, it yeah. just she had an amazing year, bro. Yeah, like yeah. It tore, everything, bro. Like top that to tour bottom. was really yeah. It was, it was crazy. I don't think. Nobody even matched the numbers that she did. Right, actually. yeah, and that goes back to my point before <laughs> about, you know, the popularity. You know, even though Tyrese is this, but Taylor Swift got the numbers, she got the radio, she got the ticket sales. So they add all that in to give her the victory. So yeah. Yeah. that's why I can understand the weekend. Now, Taylor, deser she deserves it. She, yeah, she, she dope, really too. Does. She real home. She real so the album her. of the year, we're saying Taylor put together... And and had the best run with 1989 out of all that. I, I think I think Taylor's I think it's her of the weekend because as much yeah, as I want to give it to Kendrick, I gotta say though for the weekend to be come off of winning New Artist Awards last year and then to put this record out and be like nominated for Album of the that's just crazy. How long has the weekend really been around? I mean, he's been he's been putting mixtape out for, for 2011. Yeah, because for a new minute, artist, but, he's been around for about five years. Right? Which is funny for me because Fetty Wap couldn't get nominated for best new artist Wait this year. Wait a minute, year. why didn't Fetty get? He got no nomination. He got. Yeah. Wait a, a minute, that's a, that's now, a I'm snub. beefing with the Grammys about he that. He was supposed to be right uh, nominated last year, but he didn't make the cut, and yeah. so within this, he got. Well, he got. He uh, he Fetty? didn't make the cut, and then this one, he got cut off. So he's oh not, he can't be nominated God. for Best New Artist. And 50 Cent was upset about it because Fetty he said... he had the best year. For yeah. hip-hop. 
for hip hop. Yeah, for hip hop for sure. You know what I mean? Like Big Sean, he he carried the first half of the year. Yeah, but oh, when Joan hit, Sean. it was all about Fetty all the way to now. Yeah, how do the Grammys do that? That's not fair, man. Yeah. Well, and so song of the year, Kendrick. That's crazy. All right, Taylor Swift, Blank Space. We got that that girl crush song. Which if I hear that song one more time, I'm gonna. Uh, Wiz Khalifa, see you again, and Ed Sheeran, thinking out loud. Ed Sheeran, I love thinking out loud. Yeah, man, that's a that's a strong record. I'm gonna have to oh, go with Tom. Man, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go back with Taylor again. That blank space. <laughs> I think it's gonna get record of the year. Yeah, it was. Just... Yeah, blank space may do it too. I, it's a, that's a good category. Song of the year. I, I don't know, that Wiz Khalifa one though. Yeah. See you again. Oh, that's that every. You go Who to Gap. You year? going to Old Navy. Uh, we got the Taylor Swift, the Wiz Khalifa, Ed Sheeran. Oh, that's what we just saying. That's okay. an amazing category because that yeah. "See You Again" was big. Yeah, and what it's still for I, too. I forget yeah. that it was mm-hmm. this year. Like yeah. the, as long as that song has yeah. been carrying. Uh, record of the year: D'Angelo, really love. Nope. Mark Ronson, Uptown. Nope. Uh, Ed Sheeran, Thinking Out Loud. Taylor yep. Swift, Blank Space. The yep. Weekend, Can't Feel My Face. Uh oh. Between those last three. Yeah. You might have to go with the Bruno on that one. That was a record big, of the year. I think a, it's going to go Uptown a, Funk. <laughs> that record Uptown was, Funk was definitely. So then yeah. that means I think Blank Space, yeah. I mean, is going to get Song of the Year. Mm-hmm. Damn. Uh, all right, another snub, Hotline Bling. Apparently, Cash Money forgot to, there was an overlook, and they didn't send Oof. in Oof. the nomination for it, so it couldn't get nominated. Oh. And the Grammy but said, I heard back to we back would got have, nominated. back to back did, there was an oversight. They didn't put Hotline Bling in. And the the Grammy said we would have nominated that song for multiple categories. Let me ask you this. Oof. When Purpose. Is, when is the last time y'all heard a, of a diss record <laughs> for a Grammy nomination? Like Meek Mill. Come on now. You done got... You, you know, That's you, bad. You know, it's over, man. It ain't got I, bad I feel you, man. Grammy. Meek ain't been the same yet. He is not recovered. I don't think he is going to. What if Drake performed that, back to oh, back man. at the Grammy? Oh, oh, the Grammy a diss record got it. I, I'm like, has that ever happened? <laughs> like, this dude really, really buried a, a guy that's still alive. Man. And what's crazy, you keep seeing Milk Meek pop up everywhere with Nicki Minaj, like his little side pop up. He has like, become hey. yeah. the puppy. Nicki, Nicki Minaj's boyfriend. I don't want to advocate this, bro, but if he does that, bro, we're going to see some violence. <laughs> Drake better be lay low. I don't know if we're gonna see For anything real, violent. Cause, I mean, we ain't gonna see it. nothing in LA. Right. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man, ain't no way. definitely. Ain't I mean, no I love Meek. You know what I mean? Well, he got to be in Philly to do something, but I think the niggas in Philly won't even touch Drake. Yeah, they yeah. in the club. Yeah, they, in there, they in there. They in there with him. Party. Did this with Wigan Wesley. Oof. It's bad for your boy. Four or five seconds. Huh? Was not nominated. Some people are upset about it. I'm looking at those people like. Oh, Paul McCartney and Rihanna. Paul McCartney, Rihanna, Kanye. Kanye. I wouldn't have uh, nominated it neither. Because it has a tone of a Grammy performance? No. Like, get out of here. No. Uh, <laughs> all right, moving on from that. So, B.O.B. feels he's being suppressed. He put out a bunch of tweets where he said that basically his record label, which is Atlantic Rep- Records, does not want to promote his material. He said there's a ban on B.O.B. He said, when people say I'm underrated, I think the word to use would be suppressed. That's the better word. He's got to invest in himself. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. What would your advice be? I mean, when the labels don't move, you have to. You look at Future. Future just did the whole I thing. Mean, not even before Future. You know, it goes all the way all the way back to, uh, what was the Kanye record? Was it Energy? Yeah. Which one? Now that, 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 don't kill. Stronger. 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 Stronger, yeah. He went, because the label wouldn't fund his video, he went and paid for it himself. Mm. I've watched Beyonce sit in rehearsals and they say they come whispering in her ear hey the label don't want to pay for it. she got she pull out the checkbook you gotta invest you're right man you got because here's the thing man i watch so many artists go buy these houses and cars and go stun at the club at the, ordering these bottles and then go to this go to the mall and order get these clothes and shoes you want to live a certain type of lifestyle well, you got to be able to sacrifice to invest in yourself sure. you know what i mean when the label don't want to kick in you kick in hmm. Get your money back. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think B.O.B. That's, that just has to, that. <laughs> I so, think he has to believe in himself enough. And so where does that kind of come from? I mean, he's a talented guy. I mean, and I know I always go through this this conversation. Of, I always bring up depression with entertainment and, and being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Because I feel like you go through, as a creative person, sometimes when you have to add the business element to You're it. Bipolar. Yeah, it gets a little overwhelming. How do you kind of deal with that and fight through it and... and uh, 
it's tough, man. It's really, really, really tougher than what these fans know. You know, uh, there's more artists that get signed in a year than artists that make it out. Mm. And what's really uh, depressing about it is you can wake up the day before your album is supposed to drop and find out that it's not coming out. You know what I mean? Um, run out of budget and songs need to get paid for. And you don't have radio budget. Then you don't have video. How are we going to pay for this video? And so all of that becomes stressful, especially when the label don't want to, they say, you all out. Mm. You all out of money. And so you have these fans that just want the music, and they don't know what's going on. All they know is, you ain't put this song out, and what's, what's up with you? We got this big promo, yeah. and then all of a sudden... And then all of a sudden, it never happened. Yeah. And so it's, man, you know, I pray for every artist that, that's out here grinding that wants to make it to a certain level, because every artist you see that has made it to where they are, they went through some some hard times and some depression and, and some I don't knows and you know what I mean? Mm. It's, it's tough, man. The music industry is real tough. Mm. Yeah. It's strategies. If if the label don't agree, it's as simple as not agreeing on a song on the first song that should come out. If it's your album and you like this this record I love. Yeah. The label say, Well no, nah, we love this record. You know like, nah, that's not what I want to come out with. Then when you have a disagreement, Oh, you don't agree with us? The people that's paying? Yeah, well, we tell you what, we'll let you sit for a few months mm. and think about it. Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> for real, man. Yeah, they just don't put your music out, and then the fans look at you and say, what's happening? Fans are unforgiving, man. But what's crazy is we can't even put music out when we, not even as a mixtape artist, yep. just give it away if the label don't want us to. It's tough. <laughs> Um, I mean, and you've had ups, downs, uh, in, in highlights, and one of the highlight was obviously with Tank, Please Don't Go. Uh, and again, I mean, you kind of already talked about it, to, to get nominated for a song that you, I mean, clearly you can sing that song <laughs> anywhere yeah. years later and everyone knows it, can finish the sentence, you know what I mean? Um, it's interesting hearing your conversation because when we had Tank in here, he's very similar in, in as far as like fighting for the artist yeah, that's and whatnot. Bro, he taught me everything. Uh, you know I mean? How do you feel that we can make a change? How can R and B get its voice back? It's tough. We we we're gonna have to want to invest in ourselves because if we're gonna wait on the labels to do it. We gonna keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, um, there's a certain percentage, I guess if you Google it, percentage of black people that the economy depends on. Yeah. They depend on us to ball out. They depend on us to go to Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Louboutin, go buy the, the Benzes and the and all the Beamers and all, they, de they depend on wow. us. They said that, the black culture is over 60 to 70, 60 to 70 percent of the economy. Mm -hmm. Well, why aren't we spending that on our music? Because they, uh, the industry found a way for them to download <clears throat> it for free. Yeah, but they still buying Taylor and yeah, they're buying Taylor. They're right. buying they're we, buying Adele. Yeah, but they're buying Justin Timberlake. But why is Adele putting mixtapes out? Well, is, there's a certain sound. There's a certain well, sound the that too, doesn't though. allow. When they put out albums, let's say Tank, for instance, Tyrese, for instance, Chris Brown. Chris Brown's album is coming out what on the 18th royalty. There's people that already planned it in their cars because yeah. they downloaded it for free. Yeah. Do you, I, I feel like R and B was attacked, almost attacked, and I don't know if it was in a conscious way or not but I feel like it's the only genre that was kind of left out I mean hip-hop pop rock you can EDM you can mix all those and all those keep kind of having this this voice and then it's like but when you say R&B it's this auto-tune no pop it's not auto -tune. well today in today's no. day and age of what they classify no, it's Shane mm. but see okay. but I, I there's like, no auto-tune on yeah. that even Tank got the new joint with Wale. You know what I mean? Chris Brown got the Back to Sleep. That's R&B music. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not always... It depends on the artist that's doing it where you hear the auto-tune, but you don't hear no auto-tune with Tyrese and Tank. But what we may well, hear about the record pro programmers and radio station pro programmers, like he said, what they choose. You know what I mean? They might like this record. Nah. Can I be honest with y'all? Can I be real? Yeah, be real. Give it to us. 
I'm a songwriter. I've written for Ariana Grande, I've written for Beyonce, Kelly Rowland, Tank, Chris Brown. The list goes on. When we get paid out royalties for R&B music, the rate is different. Really? The rate is lower. These are things that they're not telling the world. And what, But why is that? What is the conversation? Is there a conversation? Is it just like a number you look at and you're like, I guess we got to just kind of, that's what it I is. I think that's know? something you got to ask them. Mm. So do Because you? they don't tell this. These are things that people don't know. I'm a songwriter, so I look at my checks and know that the rates for pop music is different than R&B. The rates for alternative mm. music is different. They, it's like the rates for R&B music is the lowest what that they pay out. Yeah. So what is that? Why, why is this culture, why are y'all holding this culture of music down? And why are the royalties even paid out at a lesser rate? Mm. So well, who can mm. be like a voice for that? Who can be a voice to fight, to put this out there to the masses where you guys can get, make those changes? Like women who get paid less in the workforce than guys. I think we have to come together. And it's something that we never do. You know, Tyrese, you know, he screamed for help a little bit with this shame yep. record. Yeah, that's Ryan and, Seacrest and Elvis Duran yeah, and all that. And, and I think, but when you think about Tyrese's cry for help, sit back and think about what other artists came up and stood next to him and said, this ain't right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Not one. Because what happens with our culture is everybody is like, they ain't going to let that many of us in there. They gonna let me in there? It's just like going to the club. He might see some of his homies, he might see some of his homies, but they say, we got you. They can be like, hey, yo, 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 yo. You gotta go in, go in and leave them out. And that's the, that is the whole mentality of this culture. Mm -hmm. right, right. They gonna let me in. And if I try to pull you in with me, I'm gonna be outside yeah. too. Cause they gonna, yeah. And so it's the same thing in music, it's the same thing across the board with this culture. It's got to be the people who actually reach that pinnacle and actually do have a voice that, like yeah, you said, the people voices. like Tyrese to come together. That's how I feel, to really unite and, and have a voice. You know what I mean? Because that's who everyone's looking up to. Those are the opinions. They have the fans, man, and fans are supporters. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then like gonna, he said, it's going to come down to the, uh, you know what I mean, ushers, the people. Yeah, who Usher got to stand next to Tyrese and right, everybody, they got to fight it together. together. Yep. And that's what I love about that whole camp, though. It's crazy. Like the, the, the tanks, the... The uh, Genuines, the Tyrese's, the U's, the Pen Souls, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. y th there's a group of people out, uh, out here, especially out here now that I've been in California for a while, that you see, and it, it is that, that R&B, that they, they are building this tribe, and I feel like I the voice is about yeah. to, you know what I mean? Yeah, I just yeah. feel R&B on a different level coming, I feel people yearning it, and Queen always says it, uh, look at what the Adele track did, people were fiending for but it. But that's R&B, and you know what else was R&B? The Ed Sharon thinking out loud is R and B. Like Tamar whether Braxton you like it or not, because she white, he white. That's not R and B. Nah, just like yeah, Sam no. Smith, all of them. Ed Sharon thinking out loud. Ed Sharon's whole album is more R and B than Tamar Braxton, and you can tell her I said it. Boom. Yeah, you know I mean, it doesn't matter the skin color. People have to stop that. It's retarded that they keep using the skin color. Mm. I can go sing a country song if I fucking want to. And be a country That's a good artist. point, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, you make a good you point. You can't put me in a box. Well, yeah. the gifts that God has given me, you can't you can't call it R and B because I'm black. Right. If I want to sing sing a rock song, I can. Mm. They have to stop. Like the Tamar Braxton saying, Eric Sharon ain't on That's weak. Fuse it. And I, I want to go to this. So we're, we're going to show you three videos, okay? You're going to watch them, take a listen, and then give your commentary. But, I mean, obviously, you already know the first one, so we're going to play it. It's okay, Tank and Wale. It. You don't know. I like that record. Only you knew how much I do. Bam, Tank and Wale, yeah. you don't know, you gotta check the rest of the video out on YouTube. <laughs> Tank to stop stealing my runs. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I love that record. 
You what you, what, did you? How, how long have you heard the record before? I mean, was it like? I mean, obviously, yeah, you I mean, know, Tank plays me everything. <laughs> I've heard his whole album. It's amazing. Magic. Yeah, we always check with each other before we put music up. Fair enough. What yeah. did you guys say? I mean, Tank is a legend. You know, he keep an R and B alive, and um, I'm looking forward to the album. So, what's I liked gonna, Wale. On what's going to be his too. approach just with this album promotion and marketing to try to you know get it heard more and. Well, you know, I'm I'm interested to, to see as well. You know, uh, he's he's done a new deal with Atlantic, and he's got a little more power. And you know, uh, him and Jay Valentine, and shout out to Mike Cole who shot the video. Uh, he's got some new plans, you know. And, and I'm in a place now where that's my brother, but I'm a fan, right. and 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 I'm just sitting back watching him too. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I've seen him on Born Again Virgin, yeah. acting, doing this thing. You know, I tried to watch it. I tried to watch it because of him. <laughs> but it's really a chick joint. Like it's like a black, Sex in the yeah, City. Sex in the City. Uh-huh. Wait, Jane and the Virgin? No, Born, Born Again, Again Virgin, Virgin on TV yeah. One. They got oh, Eva Marcel. No, and you haven't seen it? No, I'm happy. They're coming that. back for another season. It's on tonight, right. I think. Yeah. Tonight it's tonight. season premiere or something. Yeah. Come yeah. soon. TV One. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Tank killed it too. And he's looking young. You know what I mean? He looks good. <laughs> you know, he stole my beard and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Came in with the with the mixtape too. Yeah. Uh all right. Next all right, so you know our sister site, After Buzz TV. So we do after shows for TV shows. And one of the shows I do over there is Love and Hip Hop. And I have to say, I have been like drained from doing Love and Hip Hop. I just can't watch Hollywood. it anymore. Just uh, all of it. I'm just like, I feel like I'm becoming a negative person, all right? <laughs> but I have to say, I'm so happy because one of my favorite, well, two of my favorites, Papoose and Remy Ma are going to be on the new season of New York. And they put this uh, promo clip together. It's a love and hip hop cipher between the two of them. Why I always gotta tell you to take the garbage outside? When you tell me what to do, that sh- bother my pride. You need to listen to your wife, honor your bride, take the pee out of pride and just ride. Why you don't cook every night? I cook on the weekdays. I'm living my life. My mother cooked every day growing up in my house. I'm not your damn mother. Better watch your mouth. We can't let this love and hip hop ruin us. The mother couples out here front and ain't true as us. And when we pop on them, they gonna be suing us. Send them to the voicemail, they can't get through to us. My eyes not closed cause the way that I'm rhyming, see? Why? It's because your new wedding ring is blinding me. It's okay, baby boy. I'll let you shine with me, give you a record deal. But I wanna find this fiend. See, I'm riding the diet. I'm Bonnie, you climbed to me. We the new mob deep, had to get pride of you. And like Ray and Ghost, I got the Wallabies. Criminology. Do a crime with me. I'ma love you until you sick and tired of me. Remy Ma, Papoos. <laughs> okay. You guys can check them out uh, this coming right. Monday. Yes. On Love That's and like Hip-Hop real R&B. We need real hip hop like that. I need some Wait. bars like that. I feel like this is going Man, to. Is you... <laughs> what? <laughs> You you like you felt like those was real bars. I mean, just, nah. I I did. I, I felt that they was in there in the moment. They was keeping it real. They was uh, um, bouncing off each other, yeah. and it was like you know, it was it was authentic. It wasn't no gimmick to it. It was like yeah. this is straight to your face. This is what it was. Mm. I mean, they're rapping about love and hip hop, so it's kind of. I like, mean, of course, it was the a, context of what we're talking about isn't yeah. really like meaningful. I just like lyrical. I just like somebody yeah. who could just break down a situation in front of your face. With, it just it, gets, it gets a little bit corny, man. Yeah, that's what I thought. At I thought. The end of the day, man, like. A lot of these reality shows, especially with people like Pat Poos, man, who was like one of the greatest lyricists, I don't think he even really met his potential ever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Pat Poos was nasty. Yeah, he was back in the day. But I mean, I just he feel like is. I feel like it's a little bit played out, bro. Like I, it's not it, it's not about the music no more. Yeah, it gets I just corny. I kind of thought we was watching like a left out scene from The Wiz. <laughs> from Carmen the Hip Hop. Car- yeah, they did some behind the scenes <laughs> left out scene that they. You know they knew it wasn't good enough. Like you know what I mean? I, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. I mean, here's what here's where I, where I, I, I stem from it. This gives me, I'm gonna say this gives me hope. I mean, off of the BT, uh, they did a cipher between the two of them on that one too. Um, I just feel like that sound of New York needs to come back from someone respected. I think Mona. We've had how many seasons of Love and Hip Hop? You're gonna bring two. I'm gonna say legends in hip hop onto onto this platform. We can't have the same type of content that you've been delivering. It needs to be different. Now you have you have two people who are part of love and hip hop. Respect that. Treat it with kind with, with uh, yeah. 
dignity. Yeah, respect. because it's just like, don't tarnish this. And I feel yeah. like Remy ain't going to allow it. I feel like Papoose really ain't going to allow it. And, and, and Remy ain't trying to come out here looking like a yeah. joke or nothing. So I'm hoping. I'm going to give I just hopes don't think it's the best rep representation of New York. Mm. Well, you nothing know, like, on Love like & Hip Hop my, New York you is. You know, but my <laughs> brother is Buster. You know what I mean? My brother is Puff. You know what I mean? Like, the kings of New York. And and I'm looking at how L.A. has come back so strong. Yeah. You know, Ty Dolla Sign, YG. Mm. You know what I mean? Even yeah. Dre Drop. You know I mean? and, and Snoop is still yeah. around. And then you got, you know, Miguel is from L.A. L.A. Probably. is popping. Uh, L.A. is popping right now. I'm from L.A. And it's like... I've been thinking about New York. You know, Buster just had a huge show last week, too. Mm -hmm. 20,000 people. Jado performed out there. He's from L.A. Yeah, we're in Jado. You know what I mean? And, and I just feel like, man, where is that New York? That, yeah. that person that's going to bring New York back. Mm -hmm. Like, know? to hell with everybody that, with that Bobby Schmurda movement who was like, he's the new voice of New York. Don't ever. He's a new voice of prison. Yeah. Bobby yeah. Smart. Yeah, and Bobby, well, even, even that is not a New York sound, man. Like, we just got yeah, done talking not. about Chicago. That's drill music that he's rapping. No disrespect but, to New York, because I, I yeah, fuck with New York. Yeah, not at all. But the Bobby, Bobby, yeah. yeah. Bobby oh. Smart has got these generations. Bobby, 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 Bobby killed it, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah but they coming song. up watching Lil Wayne and all yeah. these rappers from the South, yeah. so they're, they're, they're more, they're influenced, you know, from that Southern sound and the Who West Coast sound. But the reason why I like that promo is for the fact that it has some lyrical ability to hey, it. Look, I, and I'm I'm saying it's gonna come totally. We're never gonna agree with it because I mean at the end I like have to. You're every, from Boston Every anyway. week I have to talk <laughs> about this freaking show. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> this is like giving me like a hope of a tunnel of hope. I'm like, all right, we might get it back. But you all know right. what? It does make you say, I'll watch the first episode. Yeah, so I'm gonna see what it's about. What it's about. And I just so want to hear Remy Ma's They were trying whatever. to accomplish and they did that. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. So, unfortunately, Shmurda can't be the voice of prison because I'm going to give it to this dude. So, I was scrolling on the internet and this guy, someone posted this video. And so, this guy came out of jail and he apparently has just been in prison freestyling, creating beats, beatboxing, and he's trying to get found. And he's been posting all these videos up. I contacted him on his YouTube page, so hopefully I can try to get him in studio. Uh, his name is Don Dolo, and the song is called Even If I Lose, I Win. And everything is all him. Even when I lose, I win. Nigga, you would not defeat me. Everything I did and everywhere I've been. Nigga, my life has not been easy. Oh, everywhere I turn, everywhere I go. Every corner, every street, avenue, or road. Every gangster got a story that needs to be told. And I'm just trying to carry my load. I'm just sticking to the code. Cause even when I lose, I win. Nigga, you would not defeat me. Everything I did and everywhere I've been Nigga, my life has not been easy Oh, everywhere I turn, everywhere I go Every corner, every street, avenue, road Every gangster got a story that needs to be told And I'm just trying to carry my load I'm just sticking to the code Cause even when I lose, I'm a winner I'm genetically built to overcome and deliver Boom, y'all gotta check the rest of it He got, hey, he got man, a whole bunch dope. of videos Don Dolo, y'all gotta Yo, check so he, out. see, he's not in the studio recording this stuff? No, this guy, like, all his videos are him, like, he's the, he, he, I have this thing where he's, like, the real Lucius Lion and Cookie. So it's this one, another video, he's banging, creating the beat on a car, and his girlfriend's recording, she's doing, like, hey, like, all the little <laughs> oh ad libs in the God. back. It's so endearing like I just love this guy I every song you watch and you're like all right is the next one gonna be good and he just is creating hits it's just every song nah, you like, hear, like that joint right there that you hear the beat the put it on wax yep it's gonna do something like tell him to holler at me <laughs> well, well, I'm trying to contact him so Lonnie anyone Tunes. who can get us in contact with Lonnie that situation Tunes. we're he don't gonna get him on Lonnie Tunes yeah man I mean it's, it's passionate man you know what the game I feel like the game miss, is missing especially rap right now man a lot of authenticity mm -hmm. a lot of rappers people, start singing <laughs> that's yeah. too but just a lot of people that's what happened on R&B you know what I'm saying but no but, that, but you can hear the song it's, in his yeah, vocals, you, song, can hear, you, can, you can hear the the rhythm even when he was singing. You can yeah, you can hear the record. On nah, the it's there. Yeah, it's there. definitely. Sure, sure. Tell him to come on to my studio and cut that. 
Boom. Uh, well, you just you cut go. that <clears throat> about us sing track. What you know about that? Or E40. Yeah, I did that. Uh, actually, well, let's take a listen. Let's take a listen. We got Alonzo Be Real featuring E40. Oh, that like me. About us. Once again, he don't know your worth So lay down, I'ma make you feel better Face down, baby, when we get together You come and cry and we talk and we laugh and we bullshit We get to fucking all night, fucking all night. You know what you came for, make it alright I told her stay with her, but she don't know what to do about her Alonzo, be hey. real about us. Hey, yo, 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 yo. Y'all didn't play E40? Well, yeah, if y'all want to. I've been E40. looking for you in the broad daylight with a flashlight. <laughs> y'all, need a, y'all need to purchase the track, y'all. Go there support them. Go. go support them. Um, so, about us. We, we're here in the in 2015. Hold on. Let me let me correct you. Let me finish on 2015, but it's just about us. You said about us. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, it's about it's, it's my fake Canadian that I have it's inside about us. me. About us. Um... Where were you with the process of writing this? Why was this the single that you felt, you know what, we need E-40 on the joint? I, I feel like this is what I want to give the fans right now. This is the, this is the song. Where was your mind at creating this? Um, When I created About Us, I didn't know who I was going to put on it. Um, I, I took like a year and a half off from everybody's projects from vocal producing, from producing, mm. and I locked down and created a new sound. And so when I went on tour on the Between the Sheets tour earlier this year with Chris Brown and Trey Songs, uh, I ran into 40. And <clears throat> I've been in a place with this project where I got too many songs. And when he said, man, what you got going on? Just whatever you want me to get on. We was talking back backstage at the Chris Brown concert. and. And I said, are you serious? He said, whatever you want me to get on, man, just send it to me. And so I called my team and went through all the records because we got too many songs on the album. And and uh, they said, man, he may sound great on this song, right? On About Us. You should get About Us. We went through the, through the list of songs. Send About Us. I sent it to him. Holler at Jay Valentine. Yo, tell 40 I sent him the record. They said, man, you know what I mean? I didn't hear from 40. Two weeks later, I just had these vocals in my inbox. <laughs> <laughs> That's and true. he loved it. You know what I mean? And I thought, if he don't like this one, I'm going to send him another one. And if he don't like that one, I got more. Right. You're going to get him on one. Yeah. Right. But it was like the team was right. Like, E-40, they was like, yo, he'll sound dope on this beat. Like, just the theme of this record, he going to kill it. We sent it back, and he sent it back. And I said, well, how much it cost? He said, I just want you to write me a hook or two. Just do me a feature. Mm. I don't want no, no money. I said, what? So I got another surprise, too, with Snoop we'll talk about. But when he hit me with this, with these vocals, and I sat with the team and looked at all the songs, I said, man, we need to go with this right now. Because Big Sean, I Don't Fuck With You, was just coming down. And I said, E-40 is popping. And then he had the, uh, the record, his record. Yep. Nope. Nope. Yep. <laughs> yep, Dang. and I said, "Yo, it's it's the E40 moment right now." Yeah. You know what I mean? I got a lot of features on the album. Jado hooked me up. Yeah, the you know Red what Cup. Mean? Ty Dolla Sign, Snoop, CB, everybody. But I said, "It's the E40 window." You know what I mean? And and I really gravitated to about us. You know, it just feels good. You know what right, mean? right, right, right. Jason Joshua killed the mix. You know what I mean? And and so we went with it. And and what's amazing is it's really growing amazingly. Like the response to about us, man. Like is 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 mind boggling you know i didn't expect this you know it's, it's really gone and so shout out to 40 he, he hooked it up and i mean just shout out to you for being able to to compose that and how and i love that you're using the word team consistently uh when we get a lot of artists and we don't hear that word team coming out a lot uh and it that intrigues me because you as a writer there are times where you are the artist and then there are times where you are the team yeah. and so um 
within doing that and then putting that within being a writer and then working on your artistry how is that for you balancing that out kind of i mean you have all these songs right so how do how do you sit down look at all of your songs and say this is what i want for my album maybe not now maybe for the second or third album how do you kind of keep what you know you want for yourself versus oh you know what though this one might we might be able to send this over to chris we might be able to send this over to how do you kind of balance your music um be, now now it's weird because before i didn't care i would just give away records is there a song that you've given away that you're like what there's some or you <laughs> there's some yeah but um you know neo sat me down one day and i'll never forget the conversation he's a close brother to me and he said lonnie giving you a record deal is we don't have a have to have i don't we don't have to hear no music nobody has to hear music to give you a record deal he said the problem is is this you've been writing and vocal arranging and vocal producing for so long that I can be riding down the street and hear a brand new song I've never heard in my life and not even read the credits and know that Lonnie Burrell did this. He said, people think when you put your music out that you sound like all the guys that sound like you. Mm. And so I really took that to heart. Mm. He was like, you know, when you put your music out, it's hard, it's hard for you know, the people that's buying it to say, do I buy Chris Brown, Tank, or Jamie Foxx, or all these other R&B songs, or do I buy Lonnie Burrell? But then the average consumer is going to say, well, Lonnie Burrell sound like, mm -hmm. so I might as well go ahead and, <clears throat> not knowing that I vocal right. produced, wrote it, produced, or whatever. Uh, even Neo told me, he said, when your name is not even on the credits, I could tell if you was in the room. <laughs> and so what I did with this, over the last year, I really locked away. Like, I didn't even write on the Royalty album. I didn't write on the Chris, on the Tank, the new Tank album. I really considered my, this Alonzo project just as important. Was that hard for you discipline-wise? It was. It was. I, I'm not going to lie to you because I haven't missed the Chris Brown album since Exclusive, mm. his second album. Every album since then I've been on. Every album, two, three songs. I always got to sing. And as a songwriter, what is that feeling like? I mean, royalty, okay, so we know that this is going to be Chris Brown. I mean, they always built up his biggest album and yada, yada, yeah. and you have to take time for yourself as an artist. I mean, as as, as a artist, as a writer, what goes through your mind in that? Well, as far as like... You no, know, for one, we, we all brothers. You know, even missing, missing the Tank album, missing the Chris Brown album is weird to me because I'm not used to missing them, for one. Two, I'm a fan of them, so I've always listened to their music, you know, but as a songwriter, as a producer, and as an artist that has to live in L.A., you know, that takes away from some of the checks that you used to. You know what I mean? When you got to pull back and gamble on yourself, and these guys that I've invested in for all these years are up here, and they like, Lonnie, come on, come up here with us. You know what I mean? But... I, I hate that I missed it, but at the same time, I, I've never put me first. Mm. I've never put me first my whole career, and this is the first time I'm putting me first. And I could have gave about us to CB. I could have gave Pass Me the Blunt, which is really called Pass It, featuring Snoop and Ty Dolla Sign, to, to CB. He's heard him. He's like, this is what you need to be doing. This is crazy. And we brothers, we really sit down and go through each other's music. And, and I wanted to give it to him because I'm used to them royalties. I'm used to the advertisements. The like, yo, oh, well, let me see what Lonnie Burrell did on Chris Brown album. You know what I mean? And it was really uncomfortable to actually invest in Alonzo this time. Mm, but that's where growth comes from, yeah, uncomfortability. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so what what are we going to hear? I mean, you have so many songs already done. Uh, are you still working on music? I mean, I can't imagine that you're somebody who... <laughs> Really stops. You know, the team has been telling me to stop. <laughs> they like, will you stop recording? Because every song becomes an argument of what needs to go on the album. And I keep telling them, hey, guys, remember this. I'm a songwriter. This new sound people don't have. 
at the same time why we want to protect the sound because it's mine mm. you know it doesn't sound like anybody now you know what i mean but once we pick the album I'm going to see what my brothers want. You know what I mean? We got to get them off. The producers that produced it with me and the other writers that wrote it with me, they got to eat too. You can't be so selfish. So once once we pick my album, then y'all will start <coughs> seeing what I give to other people again. I have a lot of friends who are uh, wanting to get into the songwriting world. What would be some advice for you to give some of them? It's tough to songwrite. It's not it's not an easy thing you know i run into a lot of people that always think they can do everything and if everybody could do this then everybody would be sure. but um you have to do your research always like my research is going to the club when a lot of guys go to the club to see the chicks and have a drink I'm going to cl to the club and I'm having a drink in my hand just because it makes sense. I can't have be empty handed. Right. But I'm really listening to what the DJ is playing and I'm looking at the energy of the crowd like who dancing to that? Oh, that's the new cliche. That's the new that's the new this. That's the new pocket. That's the new cadence. You know what I mean? You got to you have to you have to know how to read the future mm. to be a songwriter or a producer because you got to know where music is today and know where it's going. And so you have to pay attention to not, you have to pay attention to cliches, you have to pay attention to cadences, you have to pay attention to what the beat, the new beats are doing. You know, Trap came in. Well, Trap is on his way out. What's the next thing? Before that, it was EDM. Well, okay, what's the next thing? You have to know how to read 2000. Right now, I'm trying to read 2017. Y'all looking forward to 2016. I'm past that. Right. So you have to not only study the formula of the hits before because that paved the way you have to know how to read ahead you have to pay attention to cliches and the new slangs in the street you have to pay attention to what the what the what they don't what they playing in the club you have to do your homework you can't just wake up and write a song because you think you poetic mm -hmm. No, nah, it's school, man. You got just like you got to go to the gym to get your body right. Or what gets me is the people that say, oh, "I can only write if I'm in. I need studio time. I can only write in the studio." I'm like, "What do you think writers are not writing in the bathroom, in the mall, wherever you're at?" Well, you, you know what's crazy is, I write a lot of songs wherever I'm at and just put the memo in my phone. I like to record when I'm yeah. in the studio, but but the thoughts yeah. and ideas and the inspiration yeah, comes from come everywhere. To you, right? Shout mean, out to the iPhones and all the new smartphones. <laughs> Thank sure, you for the voice sure. memo because, <clears throat> you know, it, uh, so much comes to you in a day when you really do this. And then you just throw it in your phone and you get to the studio. Yo, that's what I got. And that's how I started producing because I started writing writing songs in my phone that I would just hear the music to. And I would record them in my phone, go to the studio with my producers and say, hey, listen to this. Mm. And they start making the beat. Well, I wrote the music if I'm doing that. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling, no, no, I need an 808 right there. Give me some keyboard right there. That's production. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, but you just got to know what you're doing, man. You got to do your homework. Don't just jump in and thinking, I could do this because I'm poetic. Like, nah, nah, do your homework. Mm. It's just like, uh, it's education. Who are um, some of the up and coming R&B so the the singers, male, that you, are, you got, are on the radio that you're looking forward to listening to coming up? It's tough. Bryson it's Tiller, they saying that he's supposed to be the next. The next. I what? love this guy. No, it's, ca no, oh, it's catchy right now. <clears throat> the next what? You the know, it, it's just like what's the boy, uh, Jimmy Cozy? That's who you Bryson mean? Tiller reminds me. You of. talking about she's all I got? Yeah, he, he had a big record, and everybody was mm -hmm. like, "Oh, he got the next John. He's the next guy." What happened? That was to it. Him? Yeah. That was a big record, well, though. I mean, I like to see Bryson Tiller do something else. You know what I mean? I like to see Jadena come with something else. Yeah. Too, yeah. Where is he? Yeah. Well, that's it. But he was more be... rapid. Because cla nah, classic, man. Nah, yeah. That was an R&B record, man. Like, I'm talking about his cadence been and his vocal. You look this clean, oh, classic, man. That's singing. Mm -hmm. But it just was fitting in the beat. You know what I mean? So it, it tricked you. Na, 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 na. No, yes, even if she go away, yeah, 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 even yeah, if she yeah. go away. Yeah, because I mean, you look at some of the, if you go back and look at some of R. Kelly stuff, it's you, you could take some of his tone. Well, my homies in the club fiesta. Yeah. They still 
it's like a rap, but they in key. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you in key, that means you singing. Mm. So, but you know, it's tough. Like, I like I like the Bryson Tillers. I like the I like the Eric Bellingers. Yeah, yeah. I Eric's like the cold, the Jadenas. But it's like I haven't heard. Can they be that? Where is the Where is that D'Angelo album? Someone who just got sent. Where is that? Usher Confessions 8701 album where is that that Tank Sex Love and Pain album like I'm talking about classic R&B records that you can't wait to see this artist live you can't wait to get in your car and listen to it again like I don't I don't I don't see it that R&B artist that that new R&B artist that's going to take this thing over maybe it's me mm. because you know I love Eric Bellinger. That's my little brother, Eric Bellinger. That's like, that nigga called me right now when I leave here. I'm on the way. But he has some more growing to do, you know, and 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 um, he's growing at a rapid pace, and his singing is second to none. But where is that body of work that you don't want to skip a song? Mm-hmm. Where is that? You know what I mean? Where Where is that? Where's the project? Yeah, where is that R and B project? You know, it's a lot of, I think the uh, majors ruined the the music industry and they actually helped ruin R&B because they started looking for singles mm-hmm. to put out versus, yes. versus good albums. And so I don't I don't know where that R&B artist is right now. Mm. You hit you hit it on okay. the right there. We have we have to wrap up, but we got to get you back in here because we need uh, like to come back. Oh, we gonna we gonna we gonna drop yeah, the joint with Snoop right. soon, and we we'll be back. Man. And so you gotta bring that in here, please, because uh, <clears throat> I just gotta say like this is what we uh, we 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 look for in music. Someone who has a head on their shoulders, knows what they're talking about. Obviously, amazing at your craft, Thank you. but is a role model in this industry. And so, I wish you all of the best of luck Thank with you, this upcoming it. project. I can't so, wait to see the Snoop joint. Uh, so, uh, when you get the video for that, we gotta have to bring it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come to the video. I'm gonna make sure we're we gonna shoot the back. We're gonna do the man. behind the scenes right here. Uh, <clears throat> where can everyone find your music? Where can everyone follow you? Keep in contact with you. Um, they can find my music on iTunes, Google Play. You know what I mean? The uh, the new movement with About Us featuring E40, that's under Alonzo Burrell. But, you know, of course, the majority in the masses have known me as a, as Lonnie Burrell for so long. And But we like, want Alonzo for what? Why 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 that change? Well, and, and, and that's been a big question. That all came from, from my conversation with Neo. You know, people were used to Lonnie Burrell doing a certain thing. People are used to Lonnie Burrell sounding like all those other guys, but it's R and B music you want to hear, you know. It's R and B music you want to download for free, mm. but you know, Alonzo is is more radical. It's like an alter ego. It's a new sound for me, um, and it sounds like nobody. You know what I mean? So that's what Alonzo is. And wait, your Twitter handle again? My Twitter handle is Alonzo B Real. Alonzo Burrell. And then the Instagram is Alonzo Burrell as well. And then uh, on Facebook, I'm true. I stay true on Facebook. I'm still Lonnie Burrell. You know what I mean? And I got my fan, my fan page as well as my personal page, and that's Lonnie with a Y. And so I'm all over the place. AlonzoBurrell.com. You know what I mean? And uh, everything is on iTunes. Google. Google. Yeah. Google. Yeah. And then uh, also make sure you guys check out the uh, single on iTunes, About Us with E40. Uh, you guys can hit us up at BH Online on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit us up at The Beat. We are on Instagram, and we're about to be on Facebook, y'all. Finally. Uh-huh, uh, you guys can hit me up everywhere on social media at DJ Jesse J. Follow me at Poppy Watts, P A P I Watts, W A T T S. We out here. Let's go. All right, hit me up at Cameron Penny. See you next week. Boom. Alonzo, thank you for joining oh, us. Thank you. Man. Thank you so much. And everybody, come back. thank y'all for watching. Until next week, peace. From producers Maria Menunos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Music redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.